a program, which most people don't. He just made his first $1,000. He's 26 years old. He's been working a job for a while, minimum wage. And I call this first period the hook period. Remember, we have two questions to answer. Number one, is this ad for me? And two, should I keep watching? For this ad, let's assume like we don't know who Wesley Virgin is and we're just experiencing this ad for the first time. We just hear that he has a student who just made their first $1,000, 26 years old, male, and working minimum wage. So we have a pretty good idea of who the target market is. I think this is actually a pretty good hook point because it addresses exactly who the target market is. And I think I'm hooked enough to keep watching. Also notice the music, it's very aggressive and in your face, which seems to match the personality of Wesley Virgin. The song and the energy of this ad is very polarizing, which I find to be a very fascinating tactic. It can be very beneficial if you know exactly who your target market is and what they respond well to. Because with polarization, remember, it's generally gonna polarize people. It's gonna send you into yes or no. Knowing Wesley Virgin's brand, he definitely has high energy. And so this may be a way for him to kind of figure out from the start who's good for my brand, you know, who's good to enter into my sales funnel and who's not. Let's analyze the setting. Here's a man standing in front of expensive cars and then walking in front of numerous exotic sports cars. How do you think that makes you feel? Really analyze this setting. What do you interpret it as? Frank Kern, the infamous internet marketer who influenced every copywriter of today's time, met with the FTC recently, had a little sit down conversation about ethics in marketing, and he talked about unethical marketing tactics that should lead to legal action from the FTC. Enjoy this little clip. Another thing that was very, very interesting was um, their take on lavish lifestyle images. Uh, they believe that if you're talking about success or whatever, and you're doing so and you're, and you're standing in front of your collection of Lamborghinis outside of your giant mansion or whatever, that you're essentially at risk of making an implied earnings claim. That the viewer could look at all of that as a whole and they could say, well, if I buy this person's stuff, then I should reasonably, able, uh, reasonably be able to expect that I will also have a collection of Lamborghinis and live in a mansion. So just those images by themselves could potentially expose you to liability. It seems to me that this ad falls in line with what Frank Kern was alluding to with implying that a lavish lifestyle can be attained by purchasing the product or service that is being advertised. Remember that it doesn't have to be explicitly stated. It can be implied through your behavior and what you're drawing attention to. He took action. And you know what's so funny? You know, most of you that's watching me, no offense, but you're like idiots, you know? And I, and I know some of you say, oh my God, he taught me an idiot. Yeah, I did. As if the aggressive music and exotic sports cars weren't enough to get our attention, being called idiots definitely will, which I am not a fan of in any way even if it's just meant for a shock effect to ensure that we're still paying attention. You'll see why in just a second. The thing is, you you'll rather watch YouTube videos about how to get rich instead of just go and take action and get rich. And right now, if you're watching this video, if you're not making $10,000 per month on autopilot, I don't wanna call you an idiot again, but you're not too smart. I call this next phase the tear down the audience. Why would someone wanna tear down the self-esteem of the consumer? Well, it's a way to position yourself as the leader. By telling someone that they're an idiot by not making 10K a month, you're insinuating that by following your advice, then you should easily be able to make more than 10K a month. This is another example of very gray area marketing tactics. The implication is that if you are not an idiot, then following Wesley Virgin will lead to you making significantly more than 10K a month because only idiots make less than 10K a month. It does not need to be explicitly stated. He hasn't mentioned his product yet, which is why it's a gray area with the legality of implying the audience members will make more than 10K a month. Because he hasn't exactly introduced a product or said anything to the effect of, you know, here's my product, if you buy it, you'll be an idiot if you're not making 10K a month. But this is an ad, so I do think it's safe to assume that consumers are interpreting the message as being tied to a product he's interested in selling. Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin, I wanna help you. Let's go. You're looking at these vehicles right now. Are they mine? Of course they're mine. They're not fing rent it. I know some of you guys are gonna troll, it's okay. I'm coming from love because I know how it feels to struggle. I know you have that dream, you wanna do something big, but everybody around you don't understand you. I call this phase introduction of character and relating to the audience. He briefly mentions his name, but he doesn't describe anything about himself. With the targeting abilities of platforms like YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, it's hard to determine if his ad is targeting people who have already watched some of his content and therefore already aware of his brand and who he is. I think there should be a phase where you're kind of describing your success or at least giving the audience a reason to buy into what you're selling. 
But with the targeting, it's just hard to say. Like if, if he's only targeting people who have come across his content, then he doesn't really need to mention anything about himself because he's assuming that we've already looked into his story. I think he still should provide some type of reason to believe into you know, why he has all these exotic sports cars. He claims they aren't rented, so it's implying that he, they're owned and that he owns them. I mean, in order to own a fleet of that many sports cars, you gotta have a lot of money, but there's been no proof of any success. Take action, click the link, much love. Let's go! And the last phase is the call to action period. The end of the ad is essentially Wesley trying to get you to go ahead and click on the button to sign up for whatever he is selling. This period is known as the call to action period. Many marketers explicitly tell the audience what to do because most humans are sheep and need to be told what to do. It's actually a legitimate strategy to use in advertising because it's been shown to work. It's why almost like 80% you know, of the YouTube videos that you watch out there, especially Graham Stephan, he's infamous for this, they all tell you to smash the like button, hit subscribe. Hey Wesley, I know you watched my Authentic or Charlatan episode on you and I've been critical of you, so I think it would only be fair that you were given a chance to defend yourself and actually come on and explain this advertisement and some of your tactics that you use in your marketing. If you'd love to be interviewed, man, I'd love to have you on the show. Um, but I do have to give this ad a 3.7 out of 10. It's really low. And the only reason why I give it that high of a score is because I personally love the Kanye West song in the background. And it's only a minute long. I favor shorter ads. It's a little more to the point, so you get some bonus points for that. But yeah, 3.7 out of 10. Uh, there were a couple of questionable tactics used throughout, one of which seems to be very in line with what Frank Kern discussed as unethical and something that the FTC would probably fine or shut down, possibly because they would label it as illegal. At no point did you speak about yourself at all. This is another criticism of the ad. I'd like to think that the ad was targeting people who are aware of your content, but I do think there could have been a period in there instead of calling people idiots, that maybe you could have shown like, hey, I'm a successful businessman. I've started some successful businesses. I've written some books that have really helped a lot of people. I think that would have been a lot more favorable than just calling people idiots. And lastly, I have no idea what I'm clicking at the end. At no point was there anything mentioned about what product you're actually selling. Am I going to a sales page? Am I signing up for a webinar? Am I clicking to buy a book? I have no idea. Maybe I'm getting a book for free. Maybe it's just an ebook. No idea. I see that it's a product called the Seven Millionaire Life Hacks, but I don't even know what that is, nor do I know what the value proposition is. Am I learning life hacks to run a business? Am I learning life hacks to create unethical ads? I don't know, Wesley, and I think it would have been very beneficial if right at the end in your call to action, if you could have maybe added a two or three seconds of what we were actually clicking for, because in today's day and age, we probably were gonna have to give up our email, and a lot of us are defensive, so we don't wanna just give up our email for nothing. I think the ad could have been a lot better off if you did a little better job of explaining what exactly we were getting when we were going to click the button. Thanks so much for watching, and Wesley, I hope to hear from you soon.